Would you like to go where no one has ever gone before? No, I don't mean Mars. Let's leave that to Elon Musk and NASA. Today, I suggest going much, much further. We're waiting for a trip to the gas giant Jupiter. Pack your bags. The rocket is ready. The journey to the most mysterious planet in the solar system will take more than five years, but it will be worth it. Are you ready? Then let's go. I mentioned this gas giant not by accident. Alas, landing and taking a walk on the surface of Jupiter wouldn't work. The atmosphere of the largest planet in the solar system consists mainly of hydrogen and helium. Landing on Jupiter would be like landing on a cloud. But since it's gas, it means that we can easily fly through the entire atmosphere of Jupiter and come out the other end, right? Not everything is as simple as it seems. So, we're approaching mysterious Jupiter. Until we enter its atmosphere, you can look out the window at the giant, whose radius would easily fit five and a half Earth-sized planets. And if it was hollow inside, it could hide more than 1,300 such planets. Yes, these dimensions are impressive. See these white ovals on its surface? Those are its jewels. Seven giant whirlwinds of bright white color, like a string of pearls, frame the southern hemisphere of our object of study. And look, there's the famous Great Red Spot, whose width is approximately 1.3 times the diameter of Earth. This is a colossal anti-cyclonic storm and the largest atmospheric whirlwind in the solar system. I'm already looking forward to plunging into the bowels of this mysterious planet in just a few minutes. Hold on tight, we're already entering Jupiter's upper atmosphere. It's worth mentioning that the spacecraft will be shaking violently. This is no surprise, because we'll be moving at about 177,000 kilometers or 110,000 miles an hour. It's a good thing that passengers are protected by the thick walls of the spaceship from the chaos happening outside. We haven't even reached deep into the proper atmosphere of Jupiter, but it's already extremely hot, 727 degrees Celsius, that's 1340 Fahrenheit. It's scary to imagine what's next. Jupiter, like a spinning top, rotates around its axis so fast that one day here lasts only 10 Earth hours. Therefore, winds here blow at a speed of about 500 kilometers or more than 300 miles an hour. For comparison, on Earth, the deadliest hurricanes blow at 250 kilometers or 155 miles an hour, whereas on Jupiter, they are twice as strong. Strangely, it seems to be cooling down now. As we fly deeper, the temperature outside has dropped to minus 73 degrees Celsius. That's minus 100 Fahrenheit. But the pressure, on the contrary, has increased. We exit the stratosphere of Jupiter and immediately dive into its troposphere. Here, the temperature, pressure, and wind speed increase as we go deeper. But just look at how beautiful it is here. Dense ammonia clouds are swirling around us. See those flashes? That's lightning. Here, it's incredibly powerful. It permeates Jupiter's atmosphere and is sometimes the size of the whole United States. We have traveled only 2% of the way to the center of Jupiter, but unfortunately, we've already reached the point where all of our previous research of this gas giant ended. At 1,162 kilometers or 722 miles, or 133 kilometers or 83 miles below visible clouds, the probe of the spacecraft Galileo lost contact with the Earth and was destroyed by the highest pressure in the planet. It lasted almost 58 minutes in Jupiter's deadly atmosphere. But even that was quite a feat. Now, more than a decade has passed since then. We will assume that over the years, technology has advanced and a different fate awaits our current spaceship. Behind us is already 4,000 kilometers, about 2,500 miles of our journey. There's no turning back. We're coming closer and closer to Jupiter's core, one of the biggest mysteries of space. It's not just hot. 
it's impossibly hot. Outside, the heat has risen to 3,371 degrees Celsius. That's 6,100 Fahrenheit. It's good that our rocket is made of a super strong material that's even more durable than tungsten. Otherwise, our trip would end here. Visibility is almost zero, so now we're navigating intuitively through this powerful stream. At this depth, communication with the outside world is lost. All radio signals have been absorbed by the giant planet's environment, and we continue descending into the depths of Jupiter. There, where not a single space probe has ever reached, and where the human foot will probably never step. Look, what's that off in the distance? An incredible, boiling ocean of some strange substance. We are at a depth of more than 20,000 kilometers, or about 12,500 miles, in one of the inner layers of Jupiter. What happens here would be difficult for even the most famous scientists in the world to explain. Not far from the core of this gas giant, it's already hotter than the surface of the sun. And the pressure is two million times stronger than on the Earth's surface. These conditions are so extreme that the hydrogen in Jupiter's atmosphere completely changes its properties. The atoms in the hydrogen molecules are so close together that their electrons become common, like in metals. And a new state of hydrogen forms, known as metallic hydrogen. Just imagine, the lightest element in the universe is compressed and heated to such an extent that it acquires the characteristics of a metal. What a pity we can't look at this ocean from a bit closer. Metallic hydrogen has high reflectivity. Even if we switched on the brightest spotlights at full power, we still wouldn't see anything below, since 90% of the light would be reflected. It seems as though our spacecraft is mired in some kind of swamp and not moving anywhere. Due to the struggle between the enormous gravity of the planet itself and the buoyancy of the hydrogen, here it's similar to both plunging and being simultaneously pushed back. Although, is it really a swamp? If experts have compared the density of this substance to a rock, be that as it may, for some time the rocket would still shake from side to side before it completely stopped moving and became a free-floating body in the center of Jupiter. We seem to be in big trouble, so it's better to immediately teleport back to Earth. Otherwise, any later, and it will be too late. But is there anything interesting deeper? Of course. There's the core of Jupiter. The debate about what is at the center of this giant planet has not yet concluded. Some scientists suggest that the core is a molten ball of liquid. Others claim it's a rocky body, 14 to 18 times the mass of Earth. The dense central core may be surrounded by a layer of metallic hydrogen, with another layer of molecular hydrogen on top. But one thing is certain. It's incredibly hot. Up to 35,000 Celsius. That's 63,000 Fahrenheit. According to reports, even the core itself can't withstand such temperatures and melts. It's a pity that we couldn't reach it to see it all with our own eyes. In one fell swoop, we could have resolved the dispute. So be it. Let's leave this mystery untouched. It's obvious that flying through Jupiter on a rocket doesn't work. Before we even reached the center, the spacecraft was headed for a collision with its ocean of metallic hydrogen. And the trip itself can't be called pleasant. Indeed, on Jupiter, there is incredible pressure, overwhelming radiation, the strongest magnetic field in the solar system, and abnormally high temperatures. You can add raging hurricanes and whirlwinds to that, and you have a deadly cocktail that destroys and absorbs everything in its path. I suggest we leave the research of this huge boiling hydrogen cauldron to something else. For example, space probes. Moreover, since 2016, there is one, specifically the spacecraft Juno, that has been actively exploring Jupiter's atmosphere and preparing its new amazing discoveries for us. While you and I won't likely visit Jupiter, you can at least listen to the song of the Bojack.
These sounds are what the spacecraft Juno heard when it entered the gas giant's magnetosphere. You can also admire the most powerful auroras in the entire solar system. And it's all millions of kilometers from Earth. However, despite these and many other discoveries, Jupiter still remains a tough nut for researchers to crack. And so far, more questions remain than answers. What do you think? Will the second spacecraft sent to study this distant planet manage to reach its very depths and reveal the secrets of its core? Write your guesses in the comments. And remember, each like and channel subscription shows your interest in surfing the open spaces with me. See you in the next videos.